Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Well first of all I'd like to apologise for the um, delay in making another video. Um, the reason for that is me and Holly have moved into a new flat recently so uh, it's taken us a few weeks to, to get ourselves organised and such but um, hopefully we're going to get some more videos up soon. Um, we're starting a new um, we're going to start a new series of videos on this channel, which is Tech Shed for the Uninitiated, so I'll have some more information on Facebook about that soon. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I've got this Lacey um, network attached storage device, which uh, I'm going to do a teardown of. Now, uh, I'm going to move all the information off of it first, um, which I'm not sure how long that's going to take, but I'll have a look and uh, then hopefully I'll take it apart and we'll see what's inside it. But the general specs of it are, it's a four terabyte network attached storage device. It's got four of these um, one terabyte um, SATA Hitachi desk star drives inside it. Um, it's got two uh, gigabit ethernet ports on the back and it's also got two USB ports. So um, I bought this about two and a half years ago. This cost me, I think it was about 500 pounds when I bought it. Um, but obviously it was a lot more than that when it was originally purchased new because I bought it second hand. So I think these were at least a thousand pounds when they were new. Um, the hard drives, as far as I'm aware, you can put up to two terabyte drives in these. So potentially this has, um, this has the ability to go up to eight terabytes. But uh, I'm gonna move the um, data off of it first and then we'll do a teardown of it. Now when I bought it, the specs, for the price at least, looked quite impressive. Um, it said that it's got two um, gigabit ethernet ports on the back, it's got two USB 2 ports for plugging in additional external hard drives so you can run it all as, uh, all as one RAID array. Um, I've never actually used that function but uh, it, it, you can find it in the manual and it's pretty handy. Um, the only problem I'm having with it is, and uh, I, I seem to remember this is this is why I stopped using it, and uh, because it's incredibly slow, and um, I think I found the problem. Um, the reason I've got the lid off of this little router here, um, by the way, how I'm connecting this up to my laptop, um, I'm connecting this uh, via the, one of the gigabit Ethernet ports, which is the red LAN cable here. This is a gigabit. Um, this is a gigabit uh, Netgear router. So then this goes out to my laptop, which also has a gigabit uh, Ethernet card built in. So the whole connection is gigabit. Um, the only problem I'm having is that the speed of it is incredibly slow. Um, as you can see, this is um, this is the first RAID array. This is um, the first set of. Um, one terabyte drive. So this is one half of the RAID. This is the other half. So the top one here is these two drives here and the bottom one is these two here. Now as you can see I've just, um, I've, I've just paused this one to show you the speed I'm getting. Now bearing in mind that these are SATA drives. These are SATA 2 one terabyte Western Digital drives in here. Um, so there's no compromise on speed or, or anything like that there. Again, all of this is gigabit, so there's virtually, you know, for what it is, there's more than enough throughput there. But for some reason it's only transferring data at uh, a total of 9 megabytes per second, which works out to around 75 megabits, between 75 and 80 megabits. Um, now if I start this one up as well, as you can see, this one drops down to half the speed. So no matter how many um, transfers you've got going at once, you'll only ever get a maximum of 80 megabits a second. And this is through a one gigabit ethernet connection. So I thought perhaps, you know, I, I had to investigate because I, I wasn't sure what was wrong with it. I thought perhaps um, the router was the problem at first, which is why I've got the lid off of it. Um, I want to check if this, um, ch if any of the uh, ICs were overheating. Um, as you can see, these two IC, the, the main system on a chip here has a uh, heatsink on it, and so does the network interface chip. Both of these have heatsinks, but these are completely cold. These are stone cold. There's no issues there whatsoever. So that was the first um, part of the problem. You know that that was the first um, that was the first thing I could eliminate. So then I thought maybe um, I go into the web bra uh, web browser interface on the RAID array. I thought I'd see if there's anything wrong there, and this is what I found. As you can see, um, 
this uh, this here is showing the CPU usage um, on the RAID array. This is the RAID controller, and you can see it's constantly at 100%, um, which means that it's completely maxed out. The CPU is nowhere near enough power, nowhere near powerful enough to run this thing. Uh, I'm not sure what processor it's got, but once this um, once this transfer is complete, I might switch this off, take the lid off, and find out what it is. Um, I've looked on the Lacey website and the only specs I can find says that it has an Intel processor. It doesn't give any part number, any specifications, any speed or anything like that at all. Um, but from what I can see, judging by the fact that it's got 100% CPU usage, just simply moving some data across, um, I'm pretty sure that this is just going to be software RAID rather than a dedicated hardware RAID controller, which you would expect to find in such, you know, such a fantastic bit of equipment. I mean it should really have a, a dedicated hardware RAID controller um, because this is not um, consumer grade, this is not the sort of thing you can pick up in PC world. Um, I actually bought this from eBay um, and the person who, who bought it originally included the original receipt. Uh, this came from and this came from a company called RL Supplies and it was about £1,200 when it was new in 2008. So it certainly wasn't cheap, it certainly wasn't um, you know, budget, it was really high end. So I can't understand why they've only put um, a software RAID controller in there rather than a hardware RAID controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait, as I said, I'm going to wait for this um, file transfer to finish and uh, when it has I'm going to whip the lid off of that RAID array and uh, we'll have a look inside it. Right, well after moving 4 terabytes of data off of this thing I decided to find out why it was so slow so I took it apart and I found this was the main board and uh, there's no RAID controller on here which means all of the RAID configuration is uh, all done in software which is very slow, very inefficient and for, for something like this you'd expect them to put in a dedicated RAID controller especially because this supports uh, RAID 0, 1 and 5 so that would be a very low price um, piece of uh, very low price IC to, to stick on this board. If you have a look over here, we've got the um, Intel Xscale 80219 processor. Um, this is a 400 megahertz FSB and uh, 800 megahertz clock speed. Uh, over here, we've got 512 megs of DDR memory. Uh, unfortunately, I, this originally came with 256 megs, but I upgraded it to 512, but it didn't make any difference because it didn't detect the, the additional 256 megs, so it's uh, still only detecting a uh, quarter of a gig. Over here, we've got two um, 1 gigabit Ethernet controllers. Um, we've got the two magnetic modules here as well. Um, over here, we've got a, a mini PCI slot. Um, this could probably be used for a Wi Fi card or something like that, but it's not populated, so maybe that was an additional extra you could, you could get for this device. Uh, over here we've got a couple of uh, small CPLD ICs. These are probably going to be to interface the uh, Ethernet controllers onto the Xscale processor. Next to the Xscale we've got a USB controller which then links down into the two USB ports at the back. Um, this is USB 2 so you could connect in USB flash drives and use them, uh, use them over the network with this device. These two connectors here, I'm not entirely sure what these are for. These are probably just for initial configuration because I can't find any information about them. But this port up here, which although it's not connected uh, on the device, uh, this is actually just a standard RS-232 port. So you could actually um, download software onto the 256 meg flash chip um, if you, for example, bricked, uh, bricked the device over Ethernet and you weren't able to connect it. Um, you could download the updated firmware via RS-232. Uh, over here we've just got some standard power management. We've got some power management ICs, uh, a couple of capacitors here. Um, not a lot there really. I mean, it, it looks good quality, so I can't really fault it. There's no bodge wires or anything like that. Um, and down here we've got a small uh, pin header connector, which is just going off to the um, front panel here. We've just got a power button and some LEDs for that. Next to that we've got a standard ATX power connector and we've also got a small 4-pin Molex floppy connector. Um, those both connect into the power supply just here. 
Now over here we've got the connector which goes over to the back plane where the hard drives connect in. We've got two small um, we've got two small temperature sensors here. Um, when these plug into this connector here, they go into this small wind bond IC, which is uh, a monitoring IC which monitors uh, fan speed and temperature for the device. This then feeds this information back for, um, to the to the processor via the chipset here. Now if you have a look very carefully here, these two tracks here, because this is SATA, um, you've got one data, um, data sending, um, sorry, one, one pin for sending data and one pin for receiving data, and as you see we've got this here, um, we've got another one coming down from here. So in total we've got eight pins here, and the rest of these um, connectors here are just for power, and on this side we've got um, multicolor LEDs, these have uh, both green, red and orange LEDs built in here, so uh, green would be for activity, red be would be for a failed drive, and I'm guessing orange would be for some diagnostics, maybe perhaps if the, um, if the RAID array were, were to be rebuilt or something like that. Uh, on the back of the device we've just got, um, a couple, as I said, we've got a couple of Ethernet ports, a um, couple of USB ports, and we've got a small reset button here, so that would just reset the device. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all that's on there. It is a very slow and inefficient system simply because there's no dedicated RAID controller. Um, I, I'm surprised they didn't put one in here because for a device which, which would have been quite expensive, um, I think this would have been well over a thousand pounds when it was new, um, for them to, to miss out uh, on a RAID controller is, is quite sloppy of them. And uh, I think they could have increased their target market when they designed this simply by putting a RAID controller in. I mean the 256 megs of flash, as you can see there's also a footprint for a second IC there, they've obviously not populated that, um, but maybe that was on a later revision. Um, I've had a look on Google, I can't really see um, a later version of this, so maybe they just scrapped this completely and just rebuilt it, because I know that these Lacey drives, they have actually updated these, um, after, after this model they updated it with, a, with one which looked very different to this. but. Um, if you just want to use it as a hard drive and you don't want to use the RAID facility, it's it's pretty good. But if you want to use the RAID the, the RAID configuration, it's it's not very it's not very efficient. So um, as you can see, I've got four one terabyte drives up there, and if you configure them individually and you're sending data to them just as single drives without using RAID, then um, you you still only get about 10 megabytes a second of throughput to each one. Um, but using RAID, you still only get 10 megabytes per second to each of to to the to them as a collective, um, so you you cut the speed right down on this. So um, it's definitely not not really recommended um, for use with RAID. But that's uh, that's pretty much all I can say about this. In the chassis, there's just a small PCB in the front here um, for the front panel. There's nothing really on that, and uh, we've got a small ATX style power supply in the back. Um, that is replaceable, so you can replace that quite easily just by undoing the screws there. We've got a small Kingston key lock here, um, so you'd be able to secure the device if it were in a working environment. Um, we've got the uh, NIC, um, we've got the MAC addresses on the back of both of them network cards, and uh, that's about it really. Um, build quality, pretty good. You've got um, a steel chassis here, a bit of plastic on the front, and uh, the um, the top cover is also um, steel as well, so there's very little plastic in this. It's quite solidly built, but I think the, the lack of the RAID controller on the board is what lets it down, really. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, leave some comments. Have a look on my Facebook page, and uh, hopefully I'll have another video up soon.